Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar today. We are here to talk about the topic of Enscape, Enscape 101, what you need to know about real-time 3D and VR. Um, my name is Gemma De Silva, I'll be your moderator today and we are live uh, which means we will have the opportunity to answer your questions today. So uh, feel free to send in as many questions as you would like throughout the session and we'll do our best to answer those um, particularly towards the end when we have a live Q&A. Um, one thing I would actually like to know before we kick off is, have you joined an Enscape webinar before? And if you have, if you could uh, type in yes into the questions pane, it'd just be really interesting to see if you've if you've been on one of these before. Um, so joining me today is a, a couple of colleagues, Josh Radel and Daniel Monaghan, as you can see on the webcams there. Um, Dan Monaghan is head of sales for the Americas, and he spent his entire career in the AEC <laughs> software industry, <laughs> um, being with Enscape a few years now. And before that, Dan looked after sales and operations at Bentley Systems and also held the VP of marketing role at Vectorworks. And we also have another industry veteran with us today, Josh Radel, um, BIM and rendering expert who helps to provide technical training and support at Enscape. Josh holds a degree in game art and animation, which is pretty cool, um, and is an absolute visualization pro. So I think you'll enjoy watching him showcase Enscape a little bit later on. <laughs> Fantastic. So with that, I think we can dive straight into the presentation. Great. Dan is up first. So yeah, take it away, Dan. Thank you very much, Gemma. And thank you for everyone who's attending today. Uh, Josh and I put this webinar together as really an intro to Enscape and, and real-time rendering. Um, for more experienced users, um, you might find this a little bit elementary. So if you'd like to take a deep dive into anything that we see here today, uh, just let us know. We're more than happy to set up a separate meeting where we can help answer any how-to questions uh, and really take a deeper dive into the technology itself. Um, now, to kind of kick things off, uh, this is a slide I, I like to kind of start with. Uh, when we think of real-time rendering and, and, and visualization, it, it's images like these that typically come top of mind. However, more subtle and, and maybe even more important is really how Enscape and, and real-time 3D is improving the design process. Traditionally, 3D visualization, it, it's really been isolated and, and disconnected from the design process. Um, if you look at the typical visualization process in most firms, we, we tend to stop design in order to visualize, or in some firms, the design forks and the design is sent to a separate viz teams or it's even subbed out of house completely while the design team continues. And as we're merging, um, it can be difficult as these models are now, they look very different because they were really developed for different purposes and, and to answer very different questions. So when we create this split, we're, we're starting to make decisions in isolation. Um, the models are not informed by really what's happening in the parallel model. And there's a real cost to this workflow, not only in time lost and having to manually coordinate this data, uh, but also cost that happens when there are coordination errors or, or missing information. And this cost may be okay if we did this justification once, but you know, as you know, design is iterative. So this coordination happens frequently. So, so why does rendering and visualization, why, why has it traditionally been separate design? You know, why can't we have real-time rendering and, and why can't we have rendering integrated into the design process? Well, traditionally, historically, rendering technology, it's just um, very time consuming. It can be very difficult. It, it could take hours or sometimes even days to get out of high quality visualization correctly configuring textures and materials and lights to achieve a realistic result. Um, it demands specialized know-how, and even then it could require a lot of trial and error. As a result, in many firms, rendering and 3D visualization is really relegated to specialists in the firm using specialty design software, or it's even subbed out completely. With Enscape and real-time 3D, it's different. This is a next generation of visualization. It really, what it's doing is it's leveraging advances in new graphics technology, the same technology that you're finding in today's high-end video games. And while the results are incredibly impressive, more importantly, as we'll see in just a second from Josh, the results are instant and they're very easy to achieve. Quite simply, if you think about Enscape, it's just the easiest way to go from this to this. Now, a lot of software companies say they're 
fast and easy to use. And, and for Enscape, the this, this, this speed and ease of use, it's not jargon. These are really trues, and they're trues that, that are derived from the fact that Enscape's a plugin. It's not a separate rendering program. Unlike other rendering programs, you don't exchange files or manually sync models. Enscape natively plugs into your modeling program. It integrates into its interface and into your BIM workflow. In fact, if you know how to add a light or a material in your BIM program, you already know how to use Enscape's. The results are simply just faster and easier. In fact, one way to think of Enscape is just as a, as a live viewport into the model. Anything you do in your design program is automatically reflected in Enscape and in real time. And because Enscape is real time and it's integrated, uh, what you find is that it becomes an essential tool for every phase of the design process, not just rendering. And this is a real big difference between Enscape and other rendering programs. Enscape goes beyond rendering. We can help you really to see the impact your design decisions have on a building's architecture and construction so you can quickly validate your design ideas and get to decision points faster. Um, we can help you to better communicate with other project stakeholders to avoid errors and really assure that the design team is all on the same page. And we can help you set your firm apart by giving you new ways to present your designs that just simply aren't possible in, in your BIM program. So with that quick introduction of Enscape and real-time rendering, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Josh and have Josh kind of walk us through some of the ways that Enscape can benefit your design process. All right, thanks for that, Dan. Angel Karras, oh, can gosh. you see my screen okay? Yeah, we can. can. Perfect, all right. Well, cool, yeah, thanks for that, Dan. Thanks for setting it up. All right. So Enscape, it's a plugin, like Dan was saying, once you install it, it sits on top of your ribbon inside of Revit here or any of the other design applications that we support. So again, like Dan was saying, Enscape can be used throughout any phase of the design process. So here on the left-hand side, we have Revit, and then on the right-hand side here, we have Enscape. And how I get Enscape open is all I have to do is simply click the little play button in the top left-hand corner. From there, that's gonna take everything inside of my Revit screen and push that over inside of Enscape. I can even start Enscape from a blank screen, and start any changes I make inside the model. It's going to update in Enscape in real time. So, and how you navigate around is you're going to use the WASD keys on your keyboard. So W to move forward, A to move left, D to move right. So again, any that's how you sit there and navigate around. And now let's say for you know pre-design, very very early stages, we start blocking out our model. We're starting to see exactly how the space is going to look like here. We can even do some nice sun studies as well, some nice solar analysis as well. So we have a couple different options to do that. By default, Enscape is going to look at the Revit sun settings of your project. So whatever settings are inside of here, Enscape is going to see. Or you can interactively change the time of the day inside of Enscape by holding down shift and right mouse click and moving your mouse left and right. And we can see the time of day is changing interactively. Even if we go outside here, we can see what the space is going to look like at virtually any time of the day. So again, really powerful to do some nice solar studies and be able to show your clients exactly what the space is going to look like at virtually any time of the day here. We also have a mode called um, light D mode. So this is gonna show you where all of the hotspots are inside your scene. So let's say we wanna see, you know, at a certain time of day, um, let's go over inside of where I think an office would be. If I hold down shift and right mouse click again, I could scroll through the time of day and I can see, you know, over here is gonna get pretty hot. I can, you know, check out inside my kitchen in my living room. At virtually any time of day, you know, where all my hotspots are going to be inside the scene. So I can make design decisions as they come up based on what I'm seeing inside of Enscape here. Because a lot of times looking at, you know, a set of drawings, that might be really hard to kind of figure out these things. So having Enscape be that true real-time window into your model is really going to help out there. And now while we're also doing our design reviews and we're still in the very early stages we can do visual clash detection like dan was saying so let's say if we want to move this window over say we don't have time to do it right now but we know we want to check that and go back to it we have a mode called collaborative annotations this is where we can make um, quick uh, markups quick issues so let's just say we want to create issue let's just say move over you know three feet perfect what i'm going to do is hit create I'm going to move away from this and that's going to create a little issue for me. So now anytime I click on that issue, it's going to teleport me right back to there. And this is, if I hit save on the project, this is going to live with inside the project. 
I can leave comments, I can change the state of this as well. You know, all things, you know, while you're doing a design review or as you're modeling and working, you know, anytime there's an issue that comes up, you can just tag it real quick and then you can go back and fix it. You can also export these and import these as BCF files. So now, again, like Dan was saying, if any changes made inside of Revit are gonna be instantaneously available here. So let's say I need to, you know, move this wall. Perfect, all I gotta do is grab my move tool, click and move, Oop. grab my move tool, click and move, there we go. And that wall is gonna instantaneously move. So again, any changes that we make inside of Revit or any other design application that we support, Enscape's gonna fully show us those changes because it's gonna be that true real-time window into your model. So now let's say as we're getting further along in the design process and we want to start adding um, some furniture, some 3D assets to really start populating the scene and see how these things are going to look inside of there. We ship with over 3,000 pre-built assets for us to choose from. So I've already populated my scene with some assets. So we're going to see what those look like inside of here. So again, this asset library ships with Enscape. So it's going to give us over 3,000 pre-built assets for us to choose from. There we go. So now here's all of our assets. So we have different types of furniture, um, people, vehicles, vegetation as well. So now this is where you can start really populating the scene to see how the space is going to look and function. Again, when we're changing the time of day, we can see how everything's going to be interacting, get really sense of how this is going to look and feel. So now how do we get to those? So if we go up here to our asset library button, this is where we get access to our over 3,000 pre-built assets. So let's say we wanna start placing some people inside of here. We wanna put some people right next to my little pool out here. So if I go up to the people category, let's say I want to um, pick person, I can hit place asset on surface. I can just click and place wherever I would like that 3D model to be. So this is gonna be one of two ways that we can start populating our scene with assets. So the first one that we're showing is how to place these inside of Revit. Perfect, here's what that 3D model looks like inside of Revit. It's gonna come in under whatever active work set you have already um, activated. Here's what that model is gonna look like inside of Enscape. I have a mode called white mode on. So again, this is just gonna put a white, um, white material over everything in the scene. We'll switch that over to color mode in a second. So the next option that we have to add in assets is what we call our asset library inside of the Enscape window. So again, if I need to start adding more people, I can just start clicking and placing wherever I would like uh, people to be. I can click on any one of these as well, and I can rotate these models. I can scale them if I need to really position them exactly uh, where I would want these to be. And all I gotta do is hit this apply change button down in the bottom right-hand corner. From there, that's gonna take every change I made to the Enscape assets inside of the Enscape window. I'm just gonna push those back inside of Revit for me. So this kind of nice bi-directional link is really coming into play here and really starting to help out and help out my workflow. We also have the ability as well to do multi-asset placement. So let's say I need to start, um, just do a line of vegetation here. So if we go up here to this multi-asset placement and let's go to our vegetation category, we can start selecting some different types of vegetation. So we need a couple of different ones of these. I can place these along a grid path. We can see it's gonna start mass placing these. I can change the density of that as well. Or I also have a paint bucket tool where it's gonna mass select the whole field of whatever surface I selected and start placing those all through there. If I, and I can change the distribution as well. So we can do a random rotation, or a jitter, or a uniform. So it's gonna start doing a more of a grid pattern. And I can change the density of that as well, depending on what I need. And if I'm ready, all I gotta do is hit confirm placement and then apply changes. And again, that's gonna take all those and push those back inside of Revit. So again, this nice bi-directional link there. I'm just gonna discard that because I like how this is going. So that's our asset placement. So now let's say if we're getting to the point in the design process and the design um, development process where we need to start looking at materials and start seeing what types of materials those are gonna be. Go back to get my textures on here. So by default, Enscape is gonna look at all the different Revit materials that you have set up inside of your project. So again, if you've already got a project where you have materials set up, perfect. Enscape's gonna see all those and fully respect those and read them. If you wanna start adding in 
um, some different types of materials, a little bit higher quality ones. We ship with over 300 pre-built materials for us to choose from. So you can access those via our Enscape material library button up here in the top of the Enscape ribbon. So now let's say I want to replace my wood floor material in here with a Enscape material. So let's say I'm just gonna scroll down and let's say this wood double basket. All I'm gonna do is hit my import selection option. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna take this Enscape material, it's gonna import that into my Revit project and create a Revit material for me. So now, since it's a Revit material, I can apply that like I normally would any other Revit material, just by going up to, you know, I'm gonna do it the edit type way. So now I can scroll down and find my material here. So here's this wood double basket, and we can see by default, Enscape's gonna look at just the appearance tab of your Revit material. So then I click OK, you know, click OK. So now we're gonna see those new changes applied inside of Revit. And again, since it's just a Revit material, I can go edit that like I normally would any other Revit material. Or if I want a little bit easier and faster way to do this, to edit that material, I can go up to our Enscape material editor. That's this little checkered ball on the top of the Revit window. And now what I can do is scroll down to my new material here. By default, this is gonna show you all the different generic types of Revit materials you have set up inside your project. So now some cool things I can do with this, I can change the tint color, I can change the rotation of this as well if I need to. So let's make this, you know, let's do a two by two. I can change the rotation of that as well. Again, any of these changes I make, we can see how fast I'm going to see those inside of my inside of the Enscape window. I can even adjust the roughness, which is going to be how blurry or sharp the reflections are. And the best part about this Enscape material editor is all these changes I'm making inside of this are going to push those changes back inside of Revit. So how I change that scale, the rotation and the tint color, that's all gonna push back inside my Revit material as well. Now, another really cool feature with this Enscape material editor is say we need to test out some different types of materials, just get some different looks and finishes to really see what you know our clients are gonna want. We can use this Enscape material editor to preview what some different materials are gonna look like. So if I go to the material I want, there's three little dots, click those three little dots and hit replace with Enscape material. This is gonna launch our Enscape material library. So now let's say I want to start previewing what some different tile materials are gonna look like. Um, so any object inside of Revit that has that material applied to it, we can start getting a nice preview of what all these different materials are gonna look like here. And once I'm satisfied with one, say I like this one, all I have to do is hit replace. And what that's gonna do is then simply gonna replace just the appearance tab inside of Revit. And it's just gonna put, the different material maps inside of each desired slot here. So it's not gonna mess with my naming convention or my surface patterns at all of my Revit materials. So very powerful workflow to be able to preview what these different types of materials are gonna look like. Say you have some custom materials that you've created um, and you wanna add them in, you can either add them in through Revit or you can also add them in through, in through here. And re we can really utilize this Enscape material to help push these a little bit farther. So let's say, um, I want to turn this into a brick wall. What I can do here is go up to and get some materials that I've created. So we can use this brick wall material that we've created. I can load the, the diffuse map, albedo map inside the albedo map. That's just going to be the color. We can take the bump map, which is just a black and white map. Black is recessed, white is going to be raised up. And we can load that inside of the bump map channel here. And then this reflection map, this is where we're gonna use a map called a roughness map. Wherever's black is shiny, wherever's white is dull. So this looks pretty good, but if we go at an angle, we can see it's gonna lose that kind of 3D look to it. So what we can do is we can click where it says bump map, click the drop down until it's become a displacement map. And now it's gonna give me the illusion that's actual 3D geometry. I can control the recess value of that. So let's say I want 1.5 and we can see how that's changing. So again, that's where this material editor really comes in handy to start helping push the textures and materials farther as well. And one last thing on this material editor, why right, it's so powerful, is what we can do is we can also turn any material, how we have water and grass, you can turn any material inside of Revit into water or grass just by simply clicking the material that you want and going up to the Enscape type and just telling it to become water or grass or any of the other Enscape types of materials that, that you want. And from there, any object inside of Revit that has that material applied to it become water or grass or whatever material that you've associated with it. All right, 
So now also why we're working, say, you know, Revit might be kind of hard to get in some tight, tight um, spaces. So what we can do is we can also use Enscape to create different views for us. So that's where we can start. Um, say we go up to our view management tab here. And now what we can do is we can go down to the bottom here and hit create view. We can call it what we need to. We can set the camera position. We can also start saving this Enscape sun position inside of this view. And all I'm gonna do is hit create. What this is gonna do is this is gonna create a 3D view for me inside of Revit. So now I can start keeping these two views intact as well. Again, this, this nice bi-directional link, you know, really comes into play here. Now for at the point where we need to show our designs to our clients, you know, start doing design reviews with them to, to get their thoughts on it. One of the biggest things that we have is what we call virtual reality. So Enscape's a one-click VR solution. So this VR button, if you have a VR headset hooked up, what you're gonna do is just simply click that virtual reality button. And from there, um, the Enscape window is gonna be seeing what's, what you're seeing in your head, inside the headset. So if I move my physical head right, the whole Enscape window is gonna move, right? And this is very powerful because you can show your clients exactly what the space is gonna look like and feel like at a true one-to-one -one scale. So anytime they're looking at something, they can make a change, they wanna make a change, you're just gonna make the change inside of Revit. It's gonna update from in the headset in real time. So that's where this real power comes in is being able to see you know, again, these changes happen in real time, but also seeing it at a true one-to-one -one scale sense. Um, very, very powerful workflow. If we need to do just some still renderings, we can definitely do that as well. So what we're gonna do here is just kick out what we call a screenshot. So all I'm gonna do is take a screenshot, tell it where I want to go, and hit save. So with Enscape being a real-time rendering engine, pretty much what you see inside the Enscape window is what you should get for your final rendering. So again, that's as fast as it took to do a rendering. And again, since it's real-time rendering, again, what you see inside the Enscape window is what you should get for your final rendering. So being able to see the final quality right away is very, very powerful. We also have the ability as well to do batch rendering. So you can render any 3D view that you've created inside of Revit or that you've created with Enscape. You can select all of them and start rendering one right after another. Now let's say um, we're at the point where we want to uh, do like a final final rendering where we kind of like want to tweak the lighting, add some little effects to it, add some extra little pop to it. If we go up here to our visual settings tab, this is where this window is going to control the whole look and feel of the Enscape window. So we saw when I started Enscape, we had it in a mode called white mode. So that's just by going up to the mode, telling it to become white. We can do polystyro or that light view mode. We have an option is where we can adjust the outlines. So we can give it a nice um, schematic, uh, diagrammatic, you know, cartoony look to it. Really cool look as well. Some things that re can really help add a little bit more realism to the scene are the field of view. So we can really dial that down to get that nice photography look, you know, start to give it more of a photography look. And then we can adjust the depth of field here as well, turn autofocus off and we can really adjust that, that focal point. So whatever is in front, or behind that line is gonna be blurred, so we can see that there. And then in the image tab, we have some different image enhancing features like saturation, contrast, these types of things. Um, in the atmosphere tab, this is where we're gonna control the overall illumination of the scene, so we can control the sun brightness, sky brightness as well, adjust the artificial lights of, in our scene globally. And then our sky tab, this is where we're gonna control the overall Enscape cloud sun system, so we can see, um, we can control the density of the clouds, we can make it a clear blue sky day if we need to control the variety. We just have a lot of control over how we want that final result to look. And then we also have the ability as well to control what's being seen in the horizon line. So if we click where it says horizon, Enscape comes with a couple different ones like a desert, forest, uh, mountains, or if you need to load in your own custom ones that you've created or downloaded from a third party site, what you're gonna do is click the source and go to Skybox. And from here, you're just gonna click and load in wherever those are on your computer. Let's say if you downloaded them, what we can do here is click this one. And now we can start to see, I got a, a customized image in the background. This could potentially be, you know, what's actually there on the site. We can rotate this as well. Cool option that we have is we can control the brightest point of sun direction. So that's gonna lock Enscape sun to the brightest point of that background image. So when I rotate, my background image, the sun is gonna rotate with, uh, with that as well to give it a more photorealistic look to it. 
And then in our output tab, this is where we're going to set the output resolution of our final renderings. And then one button I always like to have checked before doing final renderings is what we call the show safe frame button. So this is where it's going to show me the crop regions of what's going to be my final rendering here. So without this checked, I don't really have a good representation of what's going to be in my final rendering. So now with that checked, I can see what's what's being seen in my render. We can also set the output resolution. So we can do full HD, ultra HD. We can do custom as well. So if we need to do a custom size, we can type that in. And then if you plan on going to Photoshop or another image, in, image editing software, we have some different material maps as well that you can export, object ID, material, depth, and alpha channel as well. And again, to render that, all you gotta do is just um, click the screenshot button, save it, and then let it render for a second. And that's gonna be your final rendering. One button that's specific to Revit is if we go back inside the Revit tab, there's this render image into document button. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a rendering. And that's gonna create a renderings tab for me inside my Revit project browser here. So now what I can do is I can have renderings inside my Revit project. So I can set these on a title sheet if I need to, or put them as a starting view as well. For this project, that's how we did the starting view as well. All right. So another option that we have to get our designs to our clients, more than just a, um, a VR tour or a still image is what we call our panoramas feature. So if everybody in the audience has their cell phones on them, I would invite you guys to scan this QR code if you wouldn't mind. Leave this up for about a minute or so. So now what's really great about this is you can take these QR codes and you can put them on set construction documents or you can put them on a pursuit. Cause a lot of times um, people can't look at a set of 2D drawings or even like a still image and really think of how that space is gonna look like. So with these QR codes, you can take these and you can put them on those and they're gonna get a real good idea of what the space is gonna look like. Or even if there's a new development going up, um, there's, there's the job board outside, it's got a final rendering of what the image is gonna look like. You can take these QR codes and you can put these on those job boards. So then people in the community can walk by, they can scan it with their phone, they can see exactly, you know, or get a, good idea, get a better idea of what the space is gonna look like. So once you scan it, it should ask you to go to a web link, and then from there, allow for immersive mode, and then allow for orientation. And from here, you should be seeing inside of this space here. So hopefully everybody was able to uh, get that on their phones. So now how we do that is what we're gonna do is go up to this 360 button, click the drop down for mono or stereo panorama. The difference is stereo just give the option to go to Google Cardboard. And then from there, the Enscape window is gonna start spinning around. Once it's done spinning around, you're gonna go to your uploads management tab here. It's just loading up on my other screen. So now this uploads management tab, what this is gonna do is this is going to show you all the different panoramas that you've taken, and it's gonna break it up by different projects as well. And from here, you're gonna upload that image to our cloud storage system where it's housed for you. Here we go. Perfect. So, yep, you're just gonna click the upload button. From there, that's gonna upload that image to our cloud storage system where it's housed for you. And then you're gonna get, once it's uploaded, you're gonna get three little dots that you can pull up where you can hit save QR code as file. Now from there, you can send that to your clients or even if somebody's having trouble getting on their phone, you can copy the link that it's tied to and you can just email that to them and then they can pull that same image up that you had on your phones on a computer. Another really powerful feature with these panoramas is the ability to replace panoramas. So let's say we're going through the design process and a de and client wants to make a change. Perfect, that's fine. We can go make a change to the project and then just teleport back to that specific spot just by clicking the little marker icon right there. It's gonna teleport us right back to that same position. I'm gonna just regenerate the panorama just by you know going up to mono panorama or stereo. And then once it's redone generating, click this replace button, tell it which panorama I wanna replace and just follow the step to confirm. And now from there, just tell the client, hey, refresh that link on your phone and they'll see the new changes applied to the model. So that's where you can have, you know, I'll use a funny term, you can have one link to rule the whole project life cycle. So again, one QR code, one link to go throughout the whole project's life cycle. Now you can have constant changes being seen. You don't have to sit there and send multiple links or multiple images. Just keep, send, just keep regenerating the panoramas and we can see here they're broken out. 
by different timestamps as well. So we can see exactly when those changes were made. All right, so the next option that we have to get our designs to our clients is through our video walkthrough. So I'm just going to reset some settings here. Here we go, perfect. Cool. All right, so now let's say I wanna do a nice pan shot outside of here. Let's go, let's do a nice shot outside of here. So if I go up to our video editor button, this is where, let's say I wanna start from right here. All I have to do is simply hit the little play button or the plus button on the bottom right hand corner. That's gonna add a keyframe. That's just basically a point in time saying I wanna start from right here. And then I'm just gonna navigate over and let's say do a shot from right here. Again, all I gotta do is hit the plus button. And if, um, if I wanna preview this, all I have to do is hit the preview button. And from here, I'm gonna get a nice preview of what this animation is gonna look like. At any time I can make changes to this, just by going and clicking the keyframe, adjusting the position, and then clicking the update button. And that's gonna update that position for me. And if I want to do a full walk through the house, I just keep navigating over to wherever I would like to go. And from there, just adding keyframes for each spot that I'd wanna go. And then if I'm ready to export this, all I gotta do is hit the export option down in the bottom right-hand corner, and then click, um, I can set the size of the final resolution that I would like as well, full HD, ultra HD, or even a custom size. Gets compression quality and frames per second as well. And all I gotta do is hit the export option. And then from there, I'll get a nice MP4 file that we can send to our clients. One other thing inside the video editor, if you are working on a team project, you can actually save the video path as a file. So say Dan and I are working on a project together, I can save the video path or I can even save the project. And then from there, send that to them or send that to Dan, he can load the path in. He can work out the same one as me. He can make changes to it if he needs to and start, you know, again, working off of that same video path. And the last option that we have to get our designs to our clients is what we call these standalone files. So this exe file, this is where it's gonna take everything inside the Enscape window and it's gonna package it up and create basically like a, a free viewer for your clients. So this is a file where you um, send it to your clients and then they're going to double click this file Enscape's going to launch from there they can navigate through the model they can change the time of the day they can freely explore the model um, if they have a vr headset hooked up they can go into virtual reality with it as well so very powerful to be able to give your clients the ability to freely explore the model and check out exactly what you want them to check out um, for that one they do have to have a system that meets our system requirements and then the next option that we have is what we call our web standalone. So our web standalone is pretty much the same thing, except it's just a web link that you email to your clients. From there, they click this link. Enscape's gonna launch on a web portal. And then from there, they can navigate the model, change the time of the day, and then they can freely explore the model. So, yep. Then one other thing, why we are working, we have the different perspective modes. So we have perspective mode, then we have two-point perspective, and then we also have the ability as well to go into orthographic mode as well. So, and with that, that is a good overview of all the main powerful features of Enscape. Um, with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Dan. Oh, can't hear you, man. I got it, I got it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks, nice job. Um, so I just wanted to kind of bring up a slide real quick. and. You should be able to see this floor plan. Can you see that? Yep, I can see it. Um, so this is a floor plan. Um, I was actually talking to uh, Bill over at DLR. Josh and I, were. we actually have a meeting with him set up later this afternoon. And this is kind of a novel use of that QR code that I just wanted to share, which is this, I'm starting to see this more in construction documents. So not only are you giving the contractor um, the plan information that they need in order to build, but then they can actually use their phone or their iPad or mobile device and then on the title block, you know, take a snapshot, get that 360 view that Josh showed, and really, really begin to better understand the design intent um, from the model itself. So I just wanted to kind of share that workflow uh, that I just learned myself. Um, now, in terms of learning and supporting uh, Enscape, it, it tech support's free. So if you ever have a question, you can just email our support department, they'll get back to you. There's also a lot of um, kind of self-help learning resources that I wanna share with you. So first is for frontline support. I'd encourage you to check out our knowledge base. It's really the best place to start if you have any questions. Um, with just a simple keyword search, you can find answers to most of the commonly asked Enscape questions. Second, uh, a really great and easy way to stay up to date with the company news and, and for helpful tips and tricks is to sign up to the content hub. 
Um, there you'll find our blog and some other useful resources. So if you're an existing customer and not signed up for our newsletter or blog, I would encourage you to please do that. And then also on Enscape3D.com, a lot of the output that Josh showed, uh, uh, web standalones, EXE files, 360 panos, all of these can be found um, uh, on these kind of tutorial links. So the, on Enscape3D.com, you'll find some great video tutorials and content that review a lot of what Josh showed today. Uh, one thing in particular you'll want to note is our on-demand quick start training guides. They're a real easy way to get up and running in the software itself. At the bottom of our website, you'll find ready-to-go sample models that you can begin to explore and reverse engineer. That's a nice resource. I would also encourage you to visit us on YouTube. There you'll find some great videos from our community of users, uh, but also from our product experts. And then lastly, speaking of community, our message board is an excellent place really to get non-biased advice, not only about Enscape, but hardware requirements, VR goggles. Uh, there's a great resource there, of community, a great resource with the community of users that can help answer general questions as well as answer some of your very specific workflow questions on Enscape. Um, if you would like to try Enscape, um, there is a free trial available from our website, so I'd encourage you to download Enscape and try it yourself for free. Um, Enscape is what we call a universal license, so we sell a fixed license and a floating license. We sell those monthly and annually, but they work for all of the BIM programs. So no matter, uh, so it's just one license for uh, SketchUp, Vectorworks, Archicad, Revit, and Rhino. So you don't need multiple licenses. One licenses works with all of those programs, and then it also works now Mac and Windows. And then lastly, uh, because it's Tuesday before Black Friday, I just want to let you know of our Black Friday Cyber Monday sales special. If you're looking to purchase a new seat, now's a great time. Um, and um, it, you know, and, and so that of offers available from the pricing page of our website. You just go to www.enscape3d.com and you can find more information on the pricing special. All right, and then with that, Gemma, I'd like to kind of open it up to questions. Fantastic, thank you so much. Um, before we dive into questions, Peter in the, in, in the audience, he said um, about the QR code feature, that's awesome. So I just wanted to share that because I think too is pretty awesome. Thanks. <laughs> probably my favorite feature, yeah. Right, it's it's really cool. Um, so we have a question here. Does this bi-directional link work with ArchiCAD as well? I know you demonstrated Revit today, Josh, but what about other tools? Yep. So everything I showed you minus that render image in the document, it's the exact same thing for all the different design applications that we support. Which are Revit. Rhino, Vectorworks, SketchUp, ArchiCAD, right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> nice. Um, a couple of questions on the material editor. Mm -hmm. um, so if a Revit material default is set to PBR, will it show in the Enscape material editor? Great question. Um, unfortunately, it won't. So you have to go up to the Revit material and inside the Revit, inside the Revit material editor, right click and hit um, duplicate as generic. So it has to be a generic material for it to be seen by the Enscape material editor. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, another question, when you're in Revit, changing the material, which I'm guessing you were changing it in Revit, um, they were wondering if the material itself will change for other people who are using that Revit file. Is this like a, I'm guessing it's a, uh, a work shared model or like a BIM3, like a, a model where it's going to be synced? Um, yeah, it, it would change yeah. once you hit the sync. Brilliant, thank you. Um, there's a question here about the web standalone. Is there a file size limit or a suggested model size maximum for this option? I think it's 200 megabytes is the limit. Let me real quick confirm that on our knowledge base. I'm pretty sure it's it's two or 500 is the, is the limitation for that, but I will confirm that. So let's see here, web standalone, uh, uh, web standalone export here. So if we go uh, technical limitations, it is 500, maximum file size is 500 megabytes. Oh, there you go, you get even more. <laughs> yep. Great, um, and then a question here about system requirements. Uh, what do people need in order to set up Enscape? 
It's a good question. Um, so let me share my screen here and so. Oh, let me make you present that. Okay. And then you can do that. <laughs> there you go. All right, here we go. Perfect. Cool. So on our knowledge base, you can start off by clicking the different design application that you want. Uh, for this case, we're in Revit. So for system requirements, what you're going to do is go to the administration tab and then go down here for, oh, wait, no. Um, it wasn't there. It's in the troubleshoot and you go to system requirements. And then from here, scroll down and you can see our distant, different system requirements. So we require a minimum of a four gig graphics card. Sinscape is a GP rendering engine. So you're gonna need four gigs for the graphics card. And then if you're gonna do VR, we recommend at least eight gigs or higher. Fantastic, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, is Enscape available on Mac? No. Yep, that's a great question. It is as well. So, and like Dan said, it's one license and you can use them on both. So if you need questions on system requirements for Mac, um, on our knowledge base, we do have the Mac version as well. So again, go to troubleshooting and then go to system requirements for Mac OS. And you can see here's the different system requirements for Mac. One thing to note on the Macintosh is that Enscape will take advantage of the multiple GPUs on the M chips. So um, it's not a linear improvement, but you will see um, performance improvements uh, can, the, if, depending on the sophistication of the M1. So if you have the M1, the M2, or the M or the Pro or the Max, um, you will see speed improvement. So it is worth investing in a higher end processor on the Mac side. Well, I think it's worth noting as well that um, currently we're supporting SketchUp 2021 and 2022, other CADs to follow, yep. um, but we don't have uh, publication dates yet, um, but yeah, in the works. Um, someone's asking about VR glasses and how they can connect to them. What type of virtual reality glasses are we talking? Perhaps, Valley, you could put that into the <laughs> chat pane. <laughs> um, if you have a brand in mind, <laughs> we do support a number of headsets. Yeah. So again, on our knowledge base, you go to VR headset section, and then you can see all the different headsets that we officially uh, currently support. Rift Recess, Vive, Vive Pro, Samsung Odyssey, and Windows Mixed Reality headset. So. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, Simon said, I know wind will affect some of the trees and plants and it doesn't affect all of them. How do I know which trees and plants will be affected by wind and which ones won't? That's a good question. Um, all Enscape trees should be affected by the wind. Um, if not, definitely let or send, send over a message and we can look at uh, what's going on. Yeah. That could be good. Okay. Uh, let me just see. There's one there, it's just jumped. Where's that gone? Someone's asking if they can navigate in VR or just via panorama. So good question. So if you're inside of VR, um, what you're gonna have is on either controller, there's gonna be like a little, basically like laser pointer or um, depending on the headset you have, there's an option where you, you hold down the trigger and then you kind of like point to where you wanna go. And it's going to teleport you over to that next one or you can you know with the limited space that you have with the vr headsets you can actually physically walk fantastic thank you very much mm -hmm. well i think those are all the questions that have come in um cool. if you if i haven't quite managed to find your questions today I'll, I'll have a look after the webinar and we'll make sure that uh, we drop your response afterwards as well um, but thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. I think we'll wrap things up now as we've answered all the questions. Uh, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Josh, for a great presentation. Thank and thanks, everyone, for joining us. And just a reminder to everyone um, that there will be a survey that will pop up when you leave the webinar. And as always, we are looking for feedback on how we can improve these sessions. So if you could uh, take a moment to fill that out, we'd really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, and also look out for the email that will come out in the next day or two that will provide you with the recording for today so you can go back and, and pause or share with colleagues and, and it'll provide you with a few extra resources as well. So yes, with that, thank you once again everyone for joining us. Uh, have a great rest of your day and we hope to see you here again for another webinar soon. Nice job. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.